Hello out there, my name is Milesy, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to fix PC Stitch imports. Um, and to start off, for those of you who don't know, I have redone my entire color library for PC Stitch, at least for the Stranded Cotton so far, and a few other lines. Um, and basically what I have done is made all of the colors more both more lighter in value and desaturated to make them more of a close match to what the floss actually is, which does help. And I will put a link for that download in the description below if you guys want that. And that will be continuously updated as I tweak it, as I add new entries, um, etc. I plan on doing all of the six strand floss, but for now, we'll just focus on the main 505. Now, the problem with PC Stitch is that it tends to import prioritizing value over hue, which means it looks at whether the color is light or dark before it looks at what the color actually is. And you don't normally see this a whole lot in big dithered full coverage pieces but in a lot of drawn artwork where you have big chunks of single color you will definitely notice that so let's go ahead and import something and hope this doesn't explode like it likes to do sometimes okay so we have this big dragon which has been kind of a pain in the butt to import so first we're going to change the size, and the width is 250. And the floss, we're using VMC Stranded Cotton. We are capping it to 200 uh, colors, just because after that you tend to run out of symbols, and 200 fits on a single page nicely. So let's look at the preview. Okay, there we go. And first we'll look at it to fit, and... The first thing we can see is that it doesn't really understand what to do with all this dark stuff down here. Uh, the shading, which is kind of a dark purple, has shifted very brown. And we don't want either of those. So first, we're going to go into the adjustments. I'm just going to brighten you up a little bit. Like, go to 8, maybe. And it's brightened up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more than we wanted, but we're still going to try to get rid of this black first before we fix the colors, so... Maybe 12. Because his face up here is still kind of muddy, too, and we don't want that. There we go. Now this... This gives us a better place to go, but we can see, like, there's some bright green and a whole lot of brown, and our moon turned green and pink, and we don't want that. So now what we're going to do is go to blue hue. And I think we want to shift it to the negative. Nope. Okay, so we're going to take the blue hue and we're going to increase that a little bit. Just kind of go maybe 15 to start. And that just makes everything more blue. And you can see that where the shine on his shoulder became a little bit more blue. Uh, the sky became like a brighter blue, and we'll see what that does to these browns over here. That should, if we do it enough, start to... Yeah, here we go. We can see that some of it has shifted to blue and purple. Not enough, though, so we're going to shift even more. Let's try 26. And the more you, you shift, the more you'll see that everything will start to turn a little bit more purple. And that's fine, that's what we want. Okay. Uh, so 26 was a bit much. We're also running into a problem where our lines are no longer black. So let's go into red hue, and we're going to shift the red hue a little bit negatively. Because a lot of our blues are turning purple, and we don't want that. So now... We've got that big kind of chunk down here again. Our lines, which we can see are no longer black, so we're going to come up to contrast and bump that not much, like two. And we'll see what two does. Now two seems to have brought our lines back to black. We can see 
that there is a distinction between his jaw and the outline around his jaw. We've got rid of most of the brown. There's still a big chunk down here. But we are kind of starting to get there. Let's bump that up to four. See what four looks like. And you can see that it changes all the time over here. Okay, so that was too much. So we're going to put you back down to two. And let's add a little bit of our red back. Let's take that up to like 10 instead of negative 15. Okay, and we're just going to fiddle with this for a little bit. And I will be back just messing with... The brightness, the contrast, and the red and blue hue, I might hit the saturation, but it doesn't really look like we need that. But let's see real quick what would happen if we did bump that up to like 10. We'll look at that real quick, and then I will just go and fiddle and come back when it's done. But we'll take a look at this first. Okay, and you can see pretty much all the saturation does is it bumps up the intensity of the color, but... I'm going to go, I'll keep fiddling, and I will be back when I find something I like. Okay, so we've done a whole lot of fiddling. We've got rid of pretty much all of the brown. There's still a little bit uh, here and there, but that will actually serve to give us some pretty good contrast in the stitched piece. There's some good definition between the dragon and the sky. He doesn't seem to blend in anywhere. We haven't lost any of our lines. However, they are now blue instead of black but that's an easy fix because all we need to do is say okay yes we like this and we'll let this import which will take a few moments okay and now the first thing we can see is that we've got a bunch of these bright green pixels uh that's because pc stitch is stupid basically but first, we're going to take a look at our black lines, and then we'll fix the green. So the black lines are 3750. So let's find that right here. Highlight the entry, and zoom out. Okay, so we'll take a look here. Highlight that. So we do have quite a bit of other colors that aren't what we want it to be, but let's see here. Stop highlighting. Would that serve itself to be dark blue when this is kind of a bright violet? I don't think so. That's 550. So we've got this really dark, dark violet. Let's see if we have an even darker one. No, we don't seem to, so we'll go with this. 3750 is kind of a really dark, desaturated blue, so it might go ahead and work to be that way. So let's just pop back up to the top, grab ourselves some 310, and we are just going to zoom in and start bucket filling. And that will, right there, just take care of most of it because our lines are mostly attached to one another. We're going to have to use this tool and that will just zoom in to a specific area that we select. And now we'll zoom out again, which will take a while because we really zoomed in there. We get that. And I think, there we go. We've got all of the black and when we zoom out, we can see just the black lines have really helped pop everything out. Now we need to go down here to the bottom and grab ourselves some 5200 because that's what's supposed to be these bright green ones, but PC Stitch is stupid. So now we're just going to go in through here. There's that. Grab all you, you, you. Oops, not that. 
and we're just going to put this everywhere there is bright green and not black it's kind of hard to tell where I'm trying to put the bucket sometimes and I have to do this with the white on pretty much every pattern I release since I've upgraded to PC Stitch 11. And apparently this is just the software working as intended because it can't possibly think of any situation where you might want to stitch with white floss. Okay. Oh, there's one right there so if you do ever get a pattern from me and you spot like a little missing chunk somewhere this is why this right here is why and I think that's everything except for the moon which I saved for last because that's gonna be fiddly Okay, I think that's all of it. So I think that'll zoom to fit. Nope, that goes to the previous level. Can I just tell you to fit? Yeah, like that. Okay. So now we have this red dragon, which it does always display differently on your computer screen than it will on your floss, because it looks right now very desaturated the floss will still be a little bit brighter on the fabric just because right now we're looking at light and light is very bright so if it looks a little too light on your screen that's usually going to be fine it's when it looks a little dark on your screen that you're really going to want to worry so that's why we tried to get rid of as many of the dark areas on his shoulder and his wing as possible and we got rid of all that muddy brown because browns and dark blues especially will look to your eye as if they are black so that's why we wanted to get rid of most of that as possible but that took that was about 20 minutes so it's not the quickest pro uh, process sometimes but it doesn't take forever either in about 20 minutes we imported the dragon got rid of all of his browns and cleaned him up and more or less made him look like what he's supposed to look like uh he is a lot more desaturated here and brighter but that's really to our advantage and if this thing will ever load we can do a side-by-side -side comparison but for some reason windows photo viewer likes to break on me and i need to uninstall it sometimes shut up so here we go we can see the darker version here which would be very difficult to stitch because we have all of these really dark areas that would just look to our eye as black whereas over here we have a lot of really nice purples and reds and blues and a, a few oranges but those will just lend for contrast and really help get across the, uh, these kind of moonbeams that are coming down off the dragon. So, there we go. That is a quick and dirty little look at how you can fix up patterns in PC Stitch when you're trying to import. And unfortunately, it's something that we need to do. It shouldn't be, but it is. But I hope you found this very helpful. If you did, please give it a like and a share because that really helps me out. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!